In this video, we will delve into the intricate anatomy of the larynx, exploring its various components, functions, and clinical significance. We will begin with an introduction to the larynx, setting the stage for a detailed exploration of this complex organ. Following this, we will delve into descriptions of its various components, including the laryngeal cartilages, joints, ligaments, and muscles, each playing a unique role in laryngeal function. We will then dive deeper into the anatomy of the laryngeal cavity, examining its internal structure and features. Next, we will discuss the larynx's anatomical relations, shedding light on its position and interaction with surrounding structures in the neck. This will be followed by an exploration of its blood and nerve supply. We will then focus on the larynx's primary functions, along with a discussion of some key clinical correlations. Our discussion will culminate in a conclusion, summarizing the key takeaways and emphasizing the importance of the larynx in both health and disease. The larynx, a key structure in the respiratory and vocal systems, is uniquely positioned in the anterior aspect of the neck, playing a pivotal role in air conduction to the lower respiratory tract. Anatomically, it is located above the trachea and below the hyoid bone, anterior to the pharynx, and aligns with the fourth to sixth cervical vertebrae. This median, cartilaginous segment of the respiratory tract is not only vital for breathing and voice production but also serves as a critical protective mechanism. During swallowing, the larynx acts as a sphincter, effectively preventing the aspiration of food and liquids into the trachea and lungs. This protective action is essential for maintaining a clear airway and preventing pulmonary complications. Beyond its role in swallowing, the larynx is indispensable for various upper airway functions. It facilitates breathing by maintaining an open airway, contributes to voice production through the vibration of its vocal cords, aids in the cough reflex to expel irritants from the respiratory tract, and plays a role in the mechanism of vomiting, ensuring the airway is protected during this reflex. The structural integrity of the larynx is maintained by a robust cartilaginous skeleton, comprising elements like the thyroid, cricoid, and arytenoid cartilages. This skeleton is intricately connected by a series of joints, membranes, ligaments, and muscles. These connections allow for precise movements essential for the larynx's varied functions, such as adjusting the tension of the vocal cords for speech, opening the airway for breathing, and closing it during swallowing to prevent aspiration. The larynx is structurally supported by a framework of primary and secondary cartilages, each contributing to its complex functionality. The primary laryngeal cartilages include the thyroid cartilage, this is the largest cartilage, forming the anterior and lateral walls of the larynx. The thyroid cartilage provides protection to other laryngeal structures and serves as an attachment site for muscles and vocal cords. The cricoid cartilage, it forms the base of the laryngeal framework and supports the opening of the airway. The epiglottis, it rises above the glottis and folds down during swallowing to prevent food and liquids from entering the trachea, thus protecting the airway. And the arytenoid cartilages, they are crucial in the movement and function of the vocal cords, playing a key role in phonation and regulating airflow during breathing. On the other hand, the secondary laryngeal cartilages include the corniculate cartilages of Santorini located at the apex of each arytenoid cartilage, these small cartilages help to anchor and support the vocal cords and aryepiglottic folds. And the cuneiform cartilages of Risberg, these rod shaped cartilages are embedded within the aryepiglottic folds. They provide additional support to the laryngeal structure, particularly the epiglottis, and help maintain the laryngeal inlet's shape. The thyroid cartilage, a critical structure within the larynx, is the largest of the laryngeal cartilages. It occupies a key position below the hyoid bone and above the cricoid cartilage, forming a central part of the laryngeal framework. This cartilage is distinctively shaped like a shield, composed of two broad and flat vertical plates called laminae. These laminae are uniquely oriented, angling obliquely backward and outward, and they converge anteriorly to create the laryngeal prominence, more commonly known as the Adam's apple. This prominence is particularly noticeable and serves as a significant landmark in the neck, being both visible and palpable subcutaneously. Furthermore, the thyroid cartilage features four protrusions known as cornua or horns, with two superior cornua extending upward and two inferior cornua projecting downward. The superior cornua or horn connect to the hyoid bone through ligaments, playing a role in the suspension of the larynx, while the inferior cornua or horn articulate with the cricoid cartilage below. 
the structural integrity and distinctive shape of the thyroid cartilage are essential for the protection of the vocal cords and other internal components of the larynx. It also provides an attachment site for several muscles and ligaments involved in the movement and function of the larynx. The cricoid cartilage is a vital component of the laryngeal structure, uniquely shaped like a signet ring. The anterior part of the cricoid cartilage, known as the arch, is relatively thin and forms the narrow front portion of the ring. This part is easily palpable at the base of the neck and provides a protective covering over the airway and vocal cords. Its slender structure contrasts with the broader posterior part of the cartilage. The posterior part, called the lamina, is broad and flattened, providing a larger surface area for the attachment of various muscles and ligaments. Notably, the lamina contains articular facets that are essential for articulation with other laryngeal structures. Superiorly, these facets articulate with the arytenoid cartilages, forming the cricoarytenoid joints. These joints are key to vocal cord movement, allowing the arytenoids to rotate and slide, which in turn controls the opening and closing, as well as the tension of the vocal cords. Laterally, the cricoid cartilage lamina articulates with the inferior horns, cornua, of the thyroid cartilage. This connection forms the cricothyroid joint, which permits the thyroid cartilage to tilt and glide relative to the cricoid cartilage. The arytenoid cartilages are a pair of small, pyramid-shaped structures that play a crucial role in the function of the larynx, especially in voice production and airway regulation. Each arytenoid cartilage is characterized by its distinctive geometry, featuring three surfaces, a base, and an apex. The apex of each arytenoid cartilage points upward and is often capped by a small corniculate cartilage, which is part of the secondary laryngeal cartilages. The base of the arytenoid cartilage articulates with the superior part of the cricoid cartilage lamina, forming the cricoarytenoid joint. The anterolateral surface of each arytenoid cartilage is particularly significant as it houses two important cartilaginous processes, the muscular process and the vocal process. The muscular process projects laterally and serves as an attachment point for key muscles like the posterior and lateral cricoarytenoid muscles. The vocal process, on the other hand, extends anteriorly from the base of the arytenoid cartilage and is where the vocal ligaments attach. These ligaments extend to the thyroid cartilage and are integral to the formation of the vocal cords. The medial surface of the arytenoid cartilage faces its counterpart on the opposite side, and together, they play a role in closing the posterior part of the glottis, which is important for voice modulation and protecting the airway during swallowing. The epiglottis, shaped like a racket, stands as a singular and prominent structure of the larynx, characterized by its strategic anatomical placement and function. It is comprised of a flexible, elastic cartilage, making it uniquely suited to its role as a movable flap that can quickly switch positions. The epiglottis features a posterior laryngeal surface that is oriented downwards and backwards towards the larynx, and an anterior lingual surface that faces upwards and forwards towards the tongue. The superior aspect of the epiglottis, known as the base, along with its two lateral edges, creates the framework that allows it to function as a movable lid over the laryngeal inlet. The hyoepiglottic ligaments secure the epiglottis to the hyoid bone, providing stability and a fixed axis for its movement. Meanwhile, the thyroepiglottic membrane attaches the epiglottis to the thyroid cartilage, contributing to its flexibility and range of motion. Surrounding the epiglottis is the preepiglottic space, an important anatomical area filled with adipose tissue. This space is delineated posteriorly by the epiglottis itself, providing a cushion and allowing for its movement during the act of swallowing. Anteriorly, the space is bounded by the thyroid cartilage, contributing to the separation between the larynx and the structures of the neck. Inferiorly, the preepiglottic space is bordered by the hyoepiglottic ligaments and the thyroepiglottic membrane, which contribute to the structural integrity and function of the epiglottis. This space is clinically significant because it can be a site where infections or malignancies may develop and spread. The joints of the larynx play a pivotal role in its functionality. The primary joints in this area are the cricoarytenoid and cricothyroid joints, both classified as synovial joints, known for their fluid-filled capsules that facilitate smooth movement. The cricoarytenoid joints are located between the arytenoid cartilages and the cricoid cartilage. Specifically, these joints are situated at the base of the arytenoid cartilages and connect to the superior aspect of the cricoid cartilage. 
their primary function is to allow rotation and sliding movements of the arytenoid cartilages, which are essential for the opening, closing, and tension adjustment of the vocal cords. The cricothyroid joint, on the other hand, connects the inferior horns of the thyroid cartilage to the cricoid arch. They play a crucial role in controlling the pitch of the voice. The cricothyroid joint enables the tilting and sliding of the thyroid cartilage, which results in the tension and lengthening of the vocal cords. Together, these joints facilitate a range of movements that are vital for vocalization, breathing, and protecting the airway. The larynx is supported and stabilized by a series of specialized ligaments known as laryngeal ligaments. These ligaments are broadly categorized into two types, intrinsic and extrinsic. The intrinsic ligaments, which are of particular interest, play a crucial role in connecting the various cartilages within the larynx, thereby facilitating its proper function and movement. Among the intrinsic ligaments, there are several key structures, the cricothyroid ligament, this ligament connects the cricoid and thyroid cartilages. It is an essential component in the functionality of the cricothyroid joint, which, as previously mentioned, is vital for adjusting the tension and length of the vocal cords. The thyroepiglottic ligament, this ligament connects the thyroid cartilage to the epiglottis. The thyroepiglottic ligament plays a significant role in ensuring the mobility and stability of the epiglottis, thus contributing to the protective mechanism of the airway during swallowing. Lastly the cricocorniculate ligament, this ligament connects the cricoid cartilage to the corniculate cartilages. It helps in maintaining the alignment and stability of these cartilages, which are involved in the movement and functioning of the vocal cords. The intrinsic ligaments of the larynx, by connecting the various laryngeal cartilages, ensure the structural integrity and coordinated movement necessary for voice production, breathing, and the protection of the respiratory tract. On the other hand, the extrinsic ligaments of the larynx play a pivotal role in anchoring and positioning the larynx within the neck, connecting it to adjacent structures like the hyoid bone and the trachea. Unlike the intrinsic ligaments, which interconnect the various cartilages within the larynx itself, the extrinsic ligaments extend outward, forming critical connections that ensure the larynx's stability and proper functioning within the broader context of the throat and respiratory system. The thyrohyoid membrane or ligament, this structure connects the thyroid cartilage of the larynx to the hyoid bone. The thyrohyoid membrane is essential for maintaining the relative position of the larynx to the hyoid bone, thereby facilitating movement and function in activities like swallowing and vocalization. The hyoepiglottic ligament, this ligament extends from the hyoid bone to the epiglottis. The hyoepiglottic ligament plays a crucial role in supporting the epiglottis. The proper positioning and functioning of the epiglottis, facilitated by this ligament, are critical for safe swallowing and effective protection of the lower respiratory tract. The cricotracheal ligament, this ligament connects the lower part of the larynx, specifically the cricoid cartilage, to the first ring of the trachea. This connection is crucial for providing a smooth transition from the larynx to the trachea, ensuring the continuity and stability of the airway. This ligament allows for slight movement and flexibility between these structures, accommodating the movements of the neck and the larynx during speech, swallowing, and breathing. Together, these extrinsic ligaments anchor the larynx in its position in the neck, linking it to other key structures like the hyoid bone and the trachea. The laryngeal muscles are divided into two distinct groups, the extrinsic and intrinsic muscles. Each group plays a specific and vital role in the overall functioning of the larynx. The extrinsic muscles, these muscles are primarily involved in the gross movement and stabilization of the larynx. Their main functions include the elevation and depression of the larynx, primarily during swallowing. When swallowing, the elevation of the larynx helps to close the epiglottis over the trachea, thereby preventing food or liquid from entering the lungs. The extrinsic muscles also contribute to the stabilization of the larynx within the neck, maintaining its position relative to other structures like the hyoid bone and the trachea. The intrinsic muscles of the larynx are intricately involved in voice production and the fine control of the vocal cords. These muscles adjust the tension, length, and position of the vocal cords, thereby regulating pitch and volume during speech. Additionally, the intrinsic muscles play a pivotal role in protecting the airway. They are responsible for the opening and closing of the vocal cords, ensuring that the airway is open for breathing and closed during swallowing to prevent aspiration. 
The extrinsic muscles of the larynx are a group of muscles that connect the larynx to various structures in the neck and upper thorax, playing key roles in positioning and stabilizing the larynx, particularly during swallowing and speaking. These muscles can be categorized based on their points of attachment. Firstly, the muscles connecting to the base of the skull include the stylohyoid muscle. This muscle extends from the styloid process of the skull to the hyoid bone. It plays a role in elevating the hyoid bone during swallowing. And the posterior belly of the digastric muscle, originating from the mastoid process of the skull, this muscle also attaches to the hyoid bone. It aids in the control of the hyoid and larynx during swallowing and speech. Next, the muscles connecting to the mandible include the mylohyoid muscle. This muscle forms the floor of the mouth and extends from the mandible to the hyoid bone. It helps in elevating the hyoid bone and larynx. The anterior belly of the digastric muscle, another digastric muscle part, it connects the mandible to the hyoid bone, assisting in the elevation of the larynx. And the geniohyoid muscle, originating from the mandible, this muscle also plays a role in elevating the hyoid bone and larynx. The muscle connecting to the hyoid bone, include, the thyrohyoid muscle, this muscle connects the thyroid cartilage of the larynx to the hyoid bone, decreasing the distance between these structures during swallowing. The muscles connecting to the sternum and clavicle include the sternohyoideus muscle extending from the sternum to the hyoid bone. This muscle is involved in the depression of the hyoid bone and larynx. The sternothyroid muscle. This muscle runs from the sternum to the thyroid cartilage, helping in the depression of the larynx. Lastly, the muscle connecting to the scapula include the omohyoid muscle. This unique muscle extends from the scapula to the hyoid bone. It is involved in the stabilization and depression of the hyoid bone and larynx. Each of these extrinsic laryngeal muscles contributes to the complex mechanisms of swallowing, speaking, and breathing. They work in concert to adjust the position of the larynx, ensuring its optimal alignment for various functions. The intrinsic muscles of the larynx are crucial for the fine control of voice production and the positioning of the vocal cords. These muscles are classified into three main categories based on their specific functions, the vocal cord tensor, laryngeal constrictor muscles, and the laryngeal dilator muscle. Each of these categories plays a distinct role in the intricate mechanics of the larynx. The vocal cord tensor is the cricothyroid muscle. This muscle functions by tensing and elongating the vocal cords, which increases the pitch of the voice. It does this by tilting the thyroid cartilage, thereby stretching the vocal cords. The laryngeal constrictor muscles, these muscles are primarily responsible for controlling the aperture of the vocal cords and include the lateral cricoarytenoid muscle. This muscle adducts the vocal cords, bringing them closer together, and is crucial for producing voiced sounds. The inferior thyroarytenoid muscle, it's involved in relaxing the vocal cords, which lowers the pitch of the voice. It acts by shortening and thickening the vocal cords. The superior thyroarytenoid muscle, working alongside the inferior thyroarytenoid, this muscle also helps in controlling the tension and mass of the vocal cords, contributing to voice modulation. And the intraarytenoid muscle, this muscle aids in closing the vocal cords, especially important for preventing the entry of food and liquid into the airway during swallowing. Lastly the laryngeal dilator muscle, which is the posterior cricoarytenoid muscle, this is the only muscle in the larynx that abducts the vocal cords, opening them to facilitate breathing. Its function is essential for maintaining an open airway during inhalation. Together, these intrinsic laryngeal muscles perform a symphony of movements that enable speech, singing, and the protection of the airway. They work in a finely tuned balance, contracting and relaxing to adjust the position, tension, and width of the vocal cords. The laryngeal cavity, crucial for various functions such as voice production, breathing, and swallowing, is anatomically shaped like an inverted pyramid. This cavity extends from the superior opening, known as the laryngeal inlet, down to the inferior border of the cricoid cartilage, where it seamlessly transitions into the lumen of the trachea. The cavity is demarcated from the hypopharynx by the piriform sinuses or recesses, which are grooves situated on either side of the laryngeal opening. These sinuses play a role in directing food and liquid away from the airway during swallowing, thus protecting the respiratory tract. The cavity itself is divided into three subsites, each with its specific structure and function. Firstly, the supraglottis or vestibule, 
This uppermost part of the laryngeal cavity extends from the tip of the epiglottis to the ventricular folds also known as the false vocal cords. The supraglottis is involved in protecting the lower airways by closing off the laryngeal inlet during swallowing. Secondly, the glottis, central to the laryngeal cavity, it encompasses the true vocal cords and the rima glottidis, which is the space between the vocal cords. This region is critical for voice production. The vocal cords, made of mucous membrane and muscle, vibrate as air passes through them, creating sound. The tension and position of these cords, controlled by the intrinsic muscles of the larynx, determine the pitch and volume of the voice. Lastly, the subglottis, extending from the inferior surface of the true vocal cords to the inferior aspect of the cricoid cartilage, the subglottis marks the transition from the larynx to the trachea. This region is narrower and functions as a conduit for air passing between the glottis above and the trachea below. The seamless continuity of the laryngeal cavity with the trachea is pivotal for respiration, ensuring a clear and protected airway for the passage of air into the lungs. The distinct divisions of the laryngeal cavity, the supraglottis, glottis, and subglottis each contribute uniquely to its overall functions, including voice production, airway protection, and respiratory facilitation. The vocal cords, or vocal folds, are a critical anatomical feature within the laryngeal cavity, playing a central role in voice production. These structures appear as whitish bands and are responsible for the creation of sound when air passes between them. The vocal cords form a triangular space known as the glottis. This space, crucial for the passage of air and sound production, is defined by the positioning of the vocal cords. The space between the vocal cords is referred to as the rima glottidis. During respiration, the vocal cords are apart, allowing for unobstructed airflow into the lungs. Conversely, during phonation, the vocal cords come together. This adduction narrows the rima glottidis, causing air passing through to make the vocal cords vibrate and produce sound. The tension and position of these cords, which are controlled by intrinsic laryngeal muscles, significantly influence the pitch and quality of the sound produced. Anatomically, the membranous portion of the vocal folds inserts anteriorly into the thyroid cartilage at the anterior commissure. This attachment is important for the movement and tension of the vocal cords. Posteriorly, they are separated by the posterior commissure, which allows for the necessary movement and flexibility during phonation and respiration. Concerning the laryngeal mucus and epithelial lining, the larynx's upper portion, including areas surrounding the vocal cords, is lined by ciliate respiratory epithelium. This type of lining is essential for trapping and moving particles out of the airway, playing a role in respiratory health. In contrast, the true vocal cords themselves are covered by stratified squamous epithelium. This type of epithelium is more resistant to abrasion and stress, which is crucial given the constant vibration and friction the vocal cords endure during phonation. The anatomical relations of the larynx in the human body are key to understanding its functionality and interaction with surrounding structures. Each of these relationships plays a significant role in the larynx's function in respiration, swallowing, and voice production. Anteriorly, the larynx is situated behind the infrahyoid muscles, a group of muscles that include the sternohyoid, omohyoid, sternothyroid, and thyrohyoid. These muscles are integral in the movement and stabilization of the larynx, particularly during swallowing and speaking. They work to depress the hyoid bone and the larynx, facilitating the opening of the upper esophagus during swallowing. Positioned behind the larynx are the laryngopharynx and the upper portion of the esophagus. The close proximity of these structures to the larynx is crucial for the coordination of swallowing and prevention of aspiration. Laterally, on each side of the larynx lies the thyroid gland and the cervical neurovascular bundle, which includes the carotid artery, internal jugular vein, and vagus nerve. Superiorly, the base of the tongue lies above the larynx. This relationship is particularly important for the movement of food during swallowing, as the tongue pushes food into the pharynx, just above the larynx, which then roots it into the esophagus. Lastly, the larynx continues inferiorly as the trachea, the main airway leading to the lungs. This continuity is essential for the passage of air during breathing. The blood supply and lymphatic drainage of the larynx are essential for its normal function and play a significant role in its pathology and clinical treatment. The larynx is well vascularized and has an extensive lymphatic network, ensuring efficient supply of nutrients, removal of waste, and immune response. 
The arterial supply to the larynx is provided by the superior laryngeal artery, a branch of the superior thyroid artery, provides blood supply to the upper part of the larynx, including the supraglottic region. It is crucial for nourishing the tissues in this area, including the vocal cords. And the inferior laryngeal artery, originating from the thyrocervical trunk, this artery supplies the lower part of the larynx, primarily the subglottic region. The venous drainage of the larynx closely follows the arterial supply. The laryngeal veins accompany their corresponding arteries and are named similarly, the superior and inferior laryngeal veins. As for the larynx's lymphatic system, it is divided based on its relation to the vocal cords. Lymph from the supraglottic region, which includes the area above the vocal cords, drains primarily into the upper deep cervical lymph nodes, such as the pre- and paratracheal nodes. This drainage is important for immune responses and the metastatic spread of diseases originating in this region. While, lymph from the subglottic region, the area below the vocal cords, drains into both the pre- and paratracheal nodes and the lower deep cervical lymph nodes. This extensive drainage pattern is vital for managing infections and controlling the spread of malignancies that may arise in the subglottic area. The nerve supply of the larynx is predominantly provided by branches of the vagus nerve, cranial nerve 10, which is essential for its motor and sensory functions. The key nerves involved in innervating the larynx are the superior laryngeal nerve and the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Each of these nerves has distinct and critical roles in the functioning of the larynx. The superior laryngeal nerve branches off from the vagus nerve and further divides into two branches, the internal and external laryngeal nerves. The internal laryngeal nerve, this branch is primarily sensory. It provides sensation to the mucous membrane of the larynx above the vocal cords, including the supraglottis. And the external laryngeal nerve, in contrast, this branch is mainly motor. It innervates the cricothyroid muscle, which is vital for adjusting the tension of the vocal cords and, consequently, for modulating the pitch of the voice. Secondly, the recurrent laryngeal nerve. This nerve take a longer and more circuitous route than the superior laryngeal nerves. After branching from the vagus nerve, they loop around the aorta on the left side and the subclavian artery on the right side, before ascending to the larynx. These nerves provide motor innervation to most of the intrinsic muscles of the larynx, crucial for controlling the movements of the vocal cords during speech and breathing. Additionally, the recurrent laryngeal nerves also carry sensory fibers to the mucous membrane below the vocal cords. This sensory function is important for the reflex protection of the airway. Before delving into the clinical correlations OD the larynx, let's have a look on its primary functions for a better comprehension. These primary functions include phonation, breathing, and swallowing, each vital to everyday human life. Phonation is the process of voice production. The larynx houses the vocal cords, which are essential for this function. During phonation, the vocal cords come together, and air from the lungs passes through them, causing vibration. This vibration generates sound, which is then modulated by the mouth, nose, and throat to produce speech. The pitch and volume of the voice are controlled by the tension and position of the vocal cords, regulated by intrinsic muscles of the larynx. For breathing, the larynx functions as a passageway for air between the pharynx and the trachea. During inhalation and exhalation, the vocal cords are apart, allowing air to move freely in and out of the lungs. The larynx also plays a crucial role in protecting the airway during activities other than breathing. It prevents the aspiration of food and liquids into the lungs by closing the airway during swallowing. Lastly, the larynx is actively involved in the complex process of swallowing. It moves upward and forward, and the epiglottis folds down to cover the laryngeal inlet. This action prevents food or liquid from entering the airway. The intrinsic and extrinsic muscles of the larynx, along with its nerve supply, coordinate precisely during swallowing to ensure that the passage of food into the esophagus occurs efficiently while protecting the airway from potential aspiration. Injury to the recurrent laryngeal nerve, which innervates most of the intrinsic muscles of the larynx, can result in significant clinical symptoms, primarily dysphonia, voice disorders, and dyspnea, difficulty breathing. These symptoms arise due to the nerve's critical role in controlling the movements and tension of the vocal cords. Dysphonia manifests as hoarseness, weakness, or loss of voice. 
Since the recurrent laryngeal nerve supplies motor function to the laryngeal muscles responsible for the tension and position of the vocal cords, any damage to this nerve can impair these functions. In severe cases, if both recurrent laryngeal nerves are damaged, the vocal cords may not move at all, leading to aphonia, complete loss of voice. On the other hand, dyspnea, or difficulty breathing, occurs when the vocal cords cannot adequately abduct to allow for sufficient air passage. This situation can arise if the recurrent laryngeal nerve is damaged, as it innervates the only muscle that abducts the vocal cords, the posterior cricoarytenoid muscle. In cases of unilateral nerve damage, one vocal cord may remain in a median or paramedian position, narrowing the airway and causing respiratory distress, especially during exertion. Bilateral nerve injury can lead to more severe airway obstruction, as both vocal cords could be immobilized in a position that significantly narrows the glottis. The recurrent laryngeal nerve can be injured in various circumstances, including surgical procedures, like thyroidectomy or anterior cervical spine surgery, tumors, especially thyroid or lung cancer, or trauma to the neck. Identifying and managing recurrent laryngeal nerve injury is crucial in clinical settings, as it significantly impacts a patient's quality of life due to voice changes and breathing difficulties. In conclusion, the larynx stands as a testament to the complex engineering of human anatomy and physiology. It serves as a critical juncture between the respiratory and vocal systems, playing a central role in several essential functions that are pivotal for survival and communication. The larynx enables voice production, safeguarding the airway during swallowing, and modulating the flow of air during respiration. Anatomically sophisticated, the larynx is constructed of cartilaginous structures such as the thyroid, cricoid, and arytenoid cartilages. These are intricately connected by a network of intrinsic and extrinsic muscles, which afford the larynx its dynamic range of motion and stability, essential for its functionality. The nuanced control of these muscles is primarily moderated by the superior and recurrent laryngeal nerves, which branch from the vagus nerve. These nerves not only regulate the movement and tension of the vocal cords, but also convey sensation from the larynx, playing a fundamental role in reflex actions that protect the lower respiratory tract. Clinically, the larynx may be affected by a variety of conditions, ranging from infections and inflammatory processes to direct trauma and nerve damage, as well as malignancies. Infections can lead to laryngitis, presenting as hoarseness or loss of voice. Trauma, whether external or iatrogenic from procedures like intubation or surgery, can cause structural or nerve injuries leading to dysphonia or dyspnea. Damage to the laryngeal nerves, particularly the recurrent laryngeal nerve, can result in vocal cord paralysis with significant implications for voice and breathing. Malignancies, on the other hand, may lead to a more permanent alteration of laryngeal function, requiring interventions that range from conservative management to partial or total laryngectomy, each with profound effects on a patient's ability to speak and breathe.